Hey guys, we're back at the radial arm saw and I'm going to show you this machine in action. I'm going to demonstrate the operation of this machine for you. So I'm going to make a couple of different cuts, show you a couple of different techniques. So the first cut that you'll see would be trimming the end of a piece, not using the stop block. So simply placing your material against the fence, holding it straight in and making a cut. The second cut I'm going to show you is going to be cutting a piece of material using the stop block. So we'll go through setting the stop block correctly and then applying our pressure into the fence and the stop block and then making our cut. The third cut I'm going to show you is making a small cut where there's no way to safely hold the workpiece and maintain the three inch rule. And so I'll show you how to make that cut using a push stick. So before I do anything else, I'm going to move this workpiece and I'm going to grab my air hose and I'm going to clean the table off so that I've got a nice clean workspace. Now that my workspace is clean, I'm going to demonstrate for you making a cut on the radial arm saw without the stop block. So right now, because I'm not using it, the stop block is sitting back here. And that's a safe place for it to be so we know where it is. I need to trim the end off of this board. So I'm going to set it on the table. I'm going to push it up against the fence at a position where I'm going to trim off enough of the piece. You'll notice I've got my hand well over the four inch rule, the four inch minimum spacing. I'm about nine or 10 inches away from the blade right now. I feel really good about having my hand back here. So fingers on top, thumb on the edge, and I'm pushing straight into the fence. So now I'm ready to reach around the right hand side of the machine and turn on the saw. Then I'm going to grab the handle firmly and I'm going to, with a firm grip, draw the saw towards me. You'll notice as soon as the saw finishes cutting through the material, I'm going to stop and return it back to its original position. I am not going to draw the saw all the way out to the end of the table unless I have to. Now I can power off the saw and I can remove my workpiece. Now the blade on the saw is still spinning. I need to wait for that blade to come to a complete stop before I clear any other materials because that would require putting my hands inside the four inch zone. So let's wait for this blade to stop. Now the blade is stopped. I can reach in and I'm going to grab my cutoff piece. This is not usable, so it's going to go straight in the trash underneath the table. Now let's take a look at a cut using the stop block. So I'm going to place the stop block back on the fence and I'm going to set it to 12 inches for this example. I'm going to make sure I line it up carefully, get it right in the correct position. And then I'm going to snug down this handle so that it won't move. My next step is to place my material against the fence and now I'm sliding it up against the stop block. And my pressure now is down onto the table, back into the fence, and towards the stop block. This is going to give me the highest amount of control when I make my cut. And I'm just leaning on that arm right now. I'm going to now double check. My hand is outside of four inches. So this is a safe position for my hand. And I can turn on the saw and make my cut. Again, I can pull my workpiece away. This cutoff piece is big enough that I can grab it from this side and remove it from the table and maintain the four inches of spacing. I still need to wait for the blade to come to a complete stop before I clean the saw and walk away. Now let's take a look at making a cut 
where the stop block is so close to the blade that I cannot safely hold it with my hand, and so I have to use my push stick. So I'm going to slide this stop block over to the three inch mark. So this is a pretty small piece, all right? Three inches between the end of the stop block and the blade. When I set my workpiece into position here, you can see that there's absolutely no way I can hold this with my hand and maintain a four inch spacing. The piece is only three inches long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my push stick and I'm gonna hold it like this with my thumb on the face. And now I can set this hand down on the table, placing the edge of the push stick on the corner of my board and using the push stick, I can apply pressure down onto the table, back towards the fence and into the stop block. So I'm gonna get my piece exactly where I want it and now I'm gonna hold it with this hand through the stop block and I can safely make this cut. And that workpiece stayed totally secure through the cut and I was able to keep my hand far enough away from the blade to stay safe. So I'm gonna wait for the blade to stop because this piece is so small. Again, you'll notice it takes a long time for this blade to come to a complete stop. Be patient. Do not walk away while this blade is moving. Now it's stopped so I can clear these pieces. And the last thing I need to do before I walk away from the machine is grab my air hose and clean the table off so it's ready for the next person. I do not need to move the stop block. I can leave it right there because the next person who comes up to this machine will set this appropriately for the cuts they need to make. To give you a better idea of what is happening when we're making cuts on this machine, I'm gonna show you another angle here. I've got my hand more than four inches away from the cut path. I'm putting pressure down on the table, back towards the fence, and into the stop block, and now I'm going to power on the saw and make this cut. Those are our procedures for using the radial arm saw.